Good morning. It's Tuesday, March 16th, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Of Camels and Last Straws, and our scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Paul writes, If you think you're standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. These verses always remind me of the saying, the straw that broke the camel's back. It's descriptive of a final added weight which causes a mortal stumble. The truth of a saying can certainly be found in its long use by many people, but in too many cases, public opinion is wishful thinking, not bedrock truth. The truth of the camel's poor back is relative to dynamics of physics. There is, after all, a tipping point at which the strength of a camel's legs, back, and will to stand cannot support the weight of even one last straw, and he must sit down or fall down. There's another saying, a cousin to this camel sagacity, God will never put more on you than you can bear. You hear that in times of trouble. It's intended to bring some hope for a cure, a solution, or help from some unknown source. It's intended as a theological wisdom, an appeal to trust in God, the one who knows your frame, that we're dust and in his providential care. But the saying fails for lack of context. That context is the apostle's statement to the Corinthian believers, a group so steeped in superstition and pagan practices, they were their own worst enemies when it came to following Jesus. Paul was telling them there was hope for their weak stand against the temptations to sexual perversion. There was an answer for their soul's desire to serve God with pure hearts and lives. Paul was reminding them that the choice to yield was in their power because God is stronger than any temptation that the enemy can devise. And so there's a difference between times of trouble when a loved one dies or a job is lost or health goes wanting and times of temptation when avarice grows or desire beckons or truth slips into the shadows. The difference is in human control as opposed to surrendering to the will of God. Jobs lost, or health lost, or a friend dying, these are above our pay grade. We have no choice for the weightier happenings of life and death. For these testings, we can trust God's leading, God's compassion, and sometimes his miracles. In temptations, it's a reverse setting. This is when God is trusting us to yield on the side of godliness. Temptation is an opportunity to sin not another straw heaped on the camel's back. The prime example for our instruction and empowerment is Adam and Eve. In the Garden of Eden, the tempter offered the opportunity of a lifetime. The entirety of humanity on earth at that time chose to take what was in front of them, despite God's provision of choice to say no. It was within Adam and Eve's power to choose. It wasn't some overwhelming turn of life, a straw of adversity heaped on an overburdened life. It was their will choosing their way over God's. Therein is the rub, and it's always been thus. We can, as the Burger King commercial reminds us, have it our way, or we can do it God's way. We just cannot have both. For you today, overcoming temptation isn't a matter of waiting for God to do something about all he's placed on your back. God is expecting you to say no loudly and clearly. God is expecting you to seek God's way of fleeing whatever is tempting you. Just don't wait until you hear old Slewfoot approaching in your garden. Decide now in the light of day, that your life, your body, your heart and hands belong to God. 
If you decide that in truth now, you'll be prepared to escape the temptations that come your way. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.